Gates of Heaven, Kingdom Equipping. Today we're going to do part two of You All May Prophesy. We're going to talk about the ways that God speaks, and this is a really important teaching. I'm going to start off with a story, this really incredible story that illustrates different ways God speaks. And it started years ago when a group of us from YWAM were going into town to share the gospel with people. On the way, I began to have a vision. In this vision, I saw a man holding a little girl in his arms, and there was some other people in the background. And then I heard a, a word. I heard the word Stephen, right? A name. And then I heard more words. I heard the word Wall Street and Fifth Street. And this kept going on for a while. So I started asking God questions. I said, is this somebody you want me to meet when I get downtown? And what do you want me to say to them when I get there? And so uh, I, 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 the scripture came to my mind where, where God says to Paul, I will show you the things you will suffer for my name. And so I had this vision. I had some words. I had a scripture. And we got downtown and I realized that Fifth and Wall Street wasn't far from where we were. And so I, I went over to see what would happen and, and, and what God was up to. So I went and stood on Fifth and Wall Street for a few minutes and I looked across the street and sure enough, there was a man with a young girl in his arms and there was other people behind him. And I thought, I wonder if this is Stephen. And so I ran across the street and I said, excuse me, this may sound strange, but I, had a vision earlier of a man holding a little girl and I want to ask you is your name Stephen and he said yes my name is Steve and so I said well do you believe in God and he said yes I do actually and so I said well I just want you to know that God was speaking to me about you earlier and I want to share this message with you I feel like God said that you that he's going to show you the things that you will suffer for his name. And so I asked him if I could pray for him, and, and he said yes. And so I prayed with him, and I, and I went on my business, right? Well, the story didn't end there. Uh, weeks later, somebody asked me if I wanted to go to a fundraising banquet for a charity in town and I said no thank you, you know, they kept persisting and persisting so finally I said yes and when I arrived there I looked at the next table over and guess who was there it was Steve and I went over and said hi and I said do you remember me and he said of course I do and, and he said do you know who I am and I said no and he said well I'm the mayor of this city and I'm also the speaker at the banquet tonight and, and he said, I want you to know something. He said, that story really impacted my life. And so that's the story of Steve. Um, you know, God speaks in many ways. And I told that story because it illustrates many different ways that God can speak. Uh, before I move on, I want to just give a little shout out to my book. My book, Revelation Gifts, you can get it on Amazon and Kindle. And I want to encourage you to get the book. It, it will really take you a lot deeper in these topics than these videos can. There's a lot more information in there. There's exercises at the end of each chapter that will help you grow in the prophetic. This is something we can learn how to do. And so I just want to encourage you, get the book. Uh, you know, maybe start a little study group together, and study it together, but uh, Okay, moving on we're going to talk about the different ways that God speaks and, and in that experience with Steve God spoke to me through a vision a still small voice and a scripture and these are all ways that God will give us prophetic words for people now let's talk about ways that he spoke in the Bible because God wants to open our mind to the way that he's going to speak to us. It's really important if we're going to grow in the prophetic and we're going to walk in this on a regular basis that we understand that God's first language is not English. 
And so oftentimes I think we expect God to speak to us in this voice, you know, like we hear other people speak to us. It's going to be English. It's, we're going to hear it with our ears. And that's not usually the way God speaks. So how does he speak? Well, let's look at some unusual ways that he spoke in the Bible. He spoke to the wise men through a star. He spoke to Moses through a burning bush. And he spoke to Balaam through a donkey. And so the point is God can speak however he wants. And often he will speak in unusual ways. But there's common ways that God speaks as well. God God commonly spoke in the Bible through dreams, visions, a still small voice, an impression, or of course through the scripture. And so how many of you have had a dream that you believe is from God, right? How many of you have read the Bible and something just came alive for you at that moment? You knew God was speaking to you, not just in a general sense, but in a specific sense. God can speak in so many ways. And yet you notice that none of these are an audible voice of God. Dreams, visions, a still small voice, impressions, scriptures. These are all very subtle things. And the the most common way that God speaks is through very subtle things. And so we want to begin to learn to pay attention to what he's doing so we don't miss it. So oftentimes people miss what God is saying because they don't expect him to speak that way. We want to open our minds to the ways that God will speak to us. Oftentimes God will draw our attention to something, right? So for me, Oftentimes I'll know I have a word for somebody because God will draw my attention to them. They'll just kind of stand out. Nothing like really exotic, but they'll stand out to me. And I'll know like I have a word for that person. And then I'll begin to listen to the Lord and I'll ask him, what do you want to say to that person? And he'll begin to show me sometimes a vision, sometimes an impression. You know, impressions are the most common ways that God speaks to people. And yet oftentimes those are the things we dismiss. We think that's not God. And yet so oftentimes it is. Now I'll tell you some unusual ways God has spoken to me in the past. And hopefully this will help you to open your mind to what God wants to do through you as well. One time God spoke to me through somebody's name. And this little girl's name was Shannon. And I looked at Shannon and I got the word wisdom. And I said, Shannon, God's going to give you wisdom. You have a gift of wisdom. And you're going to be able to help a lot of people with your wisdom. And she ran away. And I thought, uh-oh, what did I do? <laughs> she ran back and she had this little card. And on the card was her name and the meaning of her name. And the meaning of her name was wisdom. Isn't that powerful? God can speak through a name. God can speak through body parts. (laughs) Oftentimes God will show me somebody's head and on their head, maybe a crown or on their head, maybe a question mark. And that'll tell me they have a question. Okay. Sometimes I'll see on somebody's shoulders, I'll see maybe a chain hooked down to a burden and I'll know that they're carrying a burden that God wants to set them free from. Sometimes I'll see something positive on their shoulders like a burden from God, like a prayer. If they're a prayer warrior, I'll see prayers on their shoulders. You see, sometimes I'll see their heart or their shoes. Oftentimes God will show me their feet and if they're running, I'll know that they're moving forward in life right now. And if their feet are still, I'll know that this is a season where they're just called to rest. These are things that God will point your attention to because he's speaking to them, right? God is very efficient. He doesn't speak with words. He speaks with pictures so oftentimes. And a picture is worth a thousand words. Think about that. So oftentimes God will point me out to somebody's ear because he's speaking to them right now. Or he's increasing their ability to hear. Oftentimes God speaks through colors. I'll see a color on somebody. Yellow might mean friendship or joy. Blue might mean revelation. Red can mean uh, purification. White can mean purity. 
right? So what do we do with these things? You start to hear God, you're like, what, what does this mean? Uh, what do I do with that? Well, I want to go back to that story of Moses and the burning bush, and we can learn an important lesson from this. Moses, it said, saw a bush that was burning, but it was not consumed, and it caught his attention. Again, this is the way God speaks. He oftentimes puts something out there to catch our attention. And if we will stop and listen, we will hear what he has to say. And Moses stopped. Moses looked and he inquired into this burning bush. And out of that bush, God spoke to him and said, I want you to go to my Israelites and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. That's a pretty powerful story. This is a key story in scripture, right? And yet it started with the burning bush. And so oftentimes there are burning bushes in our lives. Are we paying attention? Do we see what God is saying in the world around us? Like I said, it's an impression or a still voice so often. And so if you get that inclination, you feel like, man, I think God is doing something right now. Stop and listen. Stop and inquire. Go and inquire of that burning bush. Look into it and listen to what God has to say for you in that moment. Sometimes we just need to still our, our inner voice. Sometimes we just need to quiet our soul and, and listen and, and even ask some questions. God, what are you saying? God, what does that mean? This happened oftentimes throughout the Bible. The prophets would see a picture like an almond branch and the prophet would say what does that mean and God would explain it that's what God is all about because he's about relationship the reason why God speaks in mysteries is because he's about relationship he wants us to inquire he's wanting to see who will spend time with him who will ask questions who will listen to him and find that wisdom uh, that he wants to give and a good example of that is, is the disciples. Let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus speak in parables? People often say, well, it's so people could understand it better. Actually, Jesus said just the opposite. He said, the reason I speak in parables is so that they would see and not see. They would hear and not understand. Think about that. Jesus actually spoke in parables so that people would not understand. And then his disciples would come to him and say, what does that mean? And he would explain it to them. Isn't that a profound lesson? Right there is, is, our, is our lesson for the day. God will speak in parables. Most people go about their business and think that was odd. But there's some people that will ask him, God, what does that mean? And those are the ones that will get the answers. There are so many mysteries all around us. God is speaking. God is always speaking. I want you to remember this. God is always speaking. When I first started moving in the prophetic, I, I would receive things from God. I knew they were from God. Sometimes God would just give me a word and it was so strong. I knew it was from God. But when people would come and ask me for a word, I would say, well, I can't do that. God hasn't given me a word. And then a revelation came to me that God is always speaking. God is talking to that person right now. God is talking to you right now. He's talking to all the people around you right now. Sometimes we can receive a prophetic word just by asking him for one. You know, just by taking the time to listen. Look at somebody, say, God, what are you saying for them right now? And see what he says. Sometimes we need to realize that God is already speaking. He's already releasing prophetic words throughout the world. And we can step into that by faith and ask him for revelation. So try it today. We, we, we mentioned many ways that God speaks. And I'm going to give you a practical exercise. Each one of these teachings is going to have a practical exercise. Because that's the way we really... Uh, are going to learn this is by doing it, right? So we talked about different ways God speaks. Dreams, visions, still small voice, impressions. What I want you to do is, is think of somebody. Or you can do this at home. 
just pray for somebody and, and ask God for a word for them. Ask, ask God for an impression or a vision or a scripture for them. Matter of fact, ask for all three of those things. Ask God to show you something for them in your mind. Show you a vision. Ask for a feeling, an impression about what he's saying about them. Ask him for a scripture. What's the scripture that pops into your mind? And then ask him for insight as to what those things mean for that person. And then email it to them or call them up. Another exercise you could do, taking this a little step further, a little more risk. Next time you're in church, look around during worship and ask God who he's speaking to and see who is highlighted to you. And then ask God to speak to you. Maybe it's an impression, maybe it's a scripture. And again, ask him what it means. What does that mean, Lord? How can I encourage somebody today with your word? This stuff is powerful. It's encouraging. It builds the church. It's also an incredible evangelistic tool. So I want to encourage you, the way you're going to learn this is by stepping out and taking a risk. Go out there, sit in the park, and look around and say, God, who are you talking to? Who do you want me to share a word with today? It's so encouraging and powerful when we release the prophetic word. And so I just want to encourage you, step out, take a risk, do it.